Thank you all for joining. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is James Williams. I'm the president of Engage Cuba. Um, Engage Cuba is an advocacy coalition of companies and organizations dedicated to expanding trade and travel with Cuba by opening up burdensome restrictions on U.S. business, um, hurting both American economy and as well as the development of the Cuban people. Um, we are based in Washington, D.C., and we're going to try to do something novel, which is start on time. Um, and we're very, very grateful to have our state council representatives here with us today um, for this important launch of the Pennsylvania uh, State Council of Engage Cuba. This is our 18th state council. The goal and objective of the state council is to show the Pennsylvania congressional delegation the broad breadth of support, both bipartisan, different industries from agriculture, manufacturing, healthcare, technology, to the cult culture, the arts, universities, academia, um, and the travel industry, which is important to the state and important to the economic development um, of the Commonwealth and the Cuban people. Um, as you know far too well, we are facing a crisis um, with American agriculture. Pennsylvania is facing this um, in extremely difficult conditions, particularly around dairy, um, which is really battling uh, some of the toughest economies this has ever faced. Um, while trade is a contentious issue, one thing is clear, there is strong bipartisan support for opening up new markets for American products. And this is what Cuba represents for the Commonwealth and for the agricultural industry as a whole. This is also the same for manufacturing, healthcare technology, and other industries where Pennsylvania is a global leader and could benefit from increased trade and economic opportunity. Pennsylvania is the 18th state to join the Engage Cuba coalition, but it has its own unique history with Cuba that is both travel back over 100 years. Many people do not know that there are two Hershey towns in the world. One, obviously, here at Hershey, Pennsylvania, but there's also a Hershey, Cuba. Uh, Milton Hershey started Hershey, Cuba to build his um, chocolate empire, and this is where he sourced much of his sugar. And so if you actually travel to Hershey, Cuba, which is only an hour or so outside of Havana, um, you can see an idealized Hershey town, uh, which I strongly recommend folks do. It still feels the vibrancy of this connection. And there's actually a museum exhibit at the Hershey Museum right now um, on display recognizing that. There's also strong agricultural and university partnerships that state place both with Penn State and other universities across the state, recognizing the importance of education and cultural exchange. We have a strong bipartisan base of support in the Commonwealth. We want to thank some of our council members, um, Senator Scarnati, former Lieutenant Governor Colley, the Pennsylvania Chamber, the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, representatives from the state legislature, business, academia and others who make this up and represent the breadth and the robust nature of the Pennsylvania civic life. Um, it shows the strong bipartisan support that exists for lifting the embargo on Cuba. 73% of the American people support lifting the embargo, 6 in 10 Republican voters. This is one of those unique issues that has diverse and robust bipartisan support. Everyone from Glenn, Representative Glenn Thompson to Representative Mike Doyle are co-sponsors of legislations to open up the Cuban market. And the most important thing is it is a win-win. This is the right economic thing to do for Pennsylvania. If we lift the embargo, experts say that $6 billion in additional US exports and services uh, would be gained as a result. But it's also the right moral thing to do. It's the right thing to do for the Cuban people. We've been doing this for almost 60 years and it has not worked. We have tried and tried and tried to hit a square peg in a round hole with no success. It's time to try something new. It's time to open things up. It's time to find a win-win solution that's good for the people of the Commonwealth, the United States, and the Cuban people. And so it is my honor and privilege um, to talk about that partnership and what it can mean for both countries um, so we're blessed to have the first secretary of the Cuban embassy, Miguel Fraga. Well, it's good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, you know that Cubans are famous for long speeches, but don't worry. I will be brief today. 
it's a pleasure for me to be again here in Harrisburg, to be again here in Pennsylvania. I really believe that the majority of the American people wants better relations with Cuba. And let me tell you something. It's what the Cubans want also. Cuba is a friendly country that believes in many things that you believe here. We love sports, for example. And I am happy to see here a representative from Penn University because Havana University signed an agreement with Penn University. I am happy to be here, as Jane mentioned, uh, the Hershey story, I was here for the opening of that exhibition. And I hope to see one day that we can share and we can exchange rum for chocolate. That could be a good uh, day. But to be honest, <laughs> what do you think? It's good? Uh, but let me say this, as Jane mentioned, this is a win-win relation. Not only because Cuba is a friendly country, not only because Cuba has so many in common with the United States, it's also because trade opportunities are there. Uh, just last year, we received one million of visitors from the United States. More than 600 South Americans and more than 400 South and Cuban Americans. There are Cuban Americans everywhere here in the, all the 50 states. Uh, we have like 438 in Alaska. I don't know what they do there because the weather is so different. <laughs> but we have, again, so much in common. We, we want to see a better future. But for that better future, we need to start today. We have been waiting for more than 60 years. And what we have? Americans can go wherever you want, but not to Cuba. You need a license to go to Cuba. Why? You can go to all the countries in the world. We are talking about the crisis that you have right here in Pennsylvania. And we buy $2 billion of dollars in food every year. We buy things in Canada. We buy things in Asia. We buy things in Europe. Why not here in the United States? That can help your farmers, but that can help our people. And that is the reason that we are here. We believe that we have more in common with the United States than with other countries. And, and again, I always mention baseball, because baseball is a passion in both countries. You know, uh, you have good Cuban players here in, in the United States, but you can have more if we have better relation. And you saw how much we accomplished in the last two years of the previous administration. We want to keep that path. We believe that relations with goodwill and respect is the path that we need to follow. And I want to uh, fulfill my promise. I want to be brief. But let me say that the door is open in our side. We want to see what we saw two years ago in the Roberto Clemente Bridge the boxing match between local kids from Pittsburgh and a Cuban team. We want to see what we saw last year, the rematch in Cuba. We have a lot of opportunities, cultural interchange. Do you saw what happened in the Kennedy Center in May last, the, this year in, in DC? We can have more and more and more. And again, it's good for both sides. The embargo has failed for more than 60 years. Everybody knows that. It's the moment to change. And we don't need to wait to tomorrow. We can start today. Thank you so much to all the people here. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. And this is the part where I uh, embarrassingly read bios of uh, folks much more impressive uh, than myself. And uh, no one better than uh, State Senator Guy Rashenthaler. Um, as I was reading through his bio, it says, prosecuted nearly 100 terrorists in the US Navy. Um, and I felt very inadequate this morning. Um, but he has been a strong leader in the state and is someone who's forward thinking about what the United States foreign policy and trade policy should be. And we're delighted to have them. Senator. Thanks so much. Well, thanks for coming out today. And it's truly an honor to speak uh, with Engage Cuba uh, Coalition. So I just want to say I commend everyone for their efforts to promote the continued engagement between the United States and Cuba, which I believe will truly benefit both countries. The isolationist policies of the last several decades have failed. I mean, they have failed, period. In terms of our policies toward Cuba, we're nearly alone on the world stage for our practices, and it's time to end the way things are now. We should recognize that America best promotes its values and ideals through cooperation and communication. The American people know the benefits and the opportunities that come with improved relations with Cuba. 
including lifting travel restrictions and opening trade relations. You've heard some statistics, I, I believe from uh, First Secretary Miguel, but in a Pew poll in December 2016, 75 percent of all U.S. adults approved of the decision to reestablish U.S. relations with Cuba, and 73 percent favored ending the embargo against Cuba. So the will of the people is clear. It is time we change tact with Cuba and allow American, uh, American culture and goods to infiltrate and democratize the island nation. 54 U.S. Senators, including Pennsylvania's own Bob Casey, co-sponsored the bipartisan Freedom of Americans to Travel to Cuba Act. Congressman Glenn Thompson and Congressman Mike Doyle co-sponsored co the bipartisan Cuba Agricultural Exports Act. These bills are not only bipartisan, but a win for America and specifically Pennsylvania. And here's why. Pennsylvania agriculture supports over 270,000 jobs in this Commonwealth. Cuba imports nearly 80% of all their food. That totals just under $2 billion each year. And Pennsylvania's leading ag commodities, including dairy, poultry, soybeans, well, they all top the list of what Cuba imports. So ending the arbitrary restrictions on agricultural trade with Cuba is a tremendous opportunity for not only Pennsylvania farms and families, but also the people of Cuba. And this is even more important now with the current dairy crisis. So why should we import, so why should Cuba import its dairy from halfway around the world when Pennsylvania farmers are ready to start to export it now? It just doesn't make sense. But not only should we talk in terms of agriculture, we also have to talk, at manu talk about manufacturing. Pennsylvania manufacturers stand to win a lot if we relax travel and trade uh, in the embargo. Cuba needs and has requested over $6 billion in foreign investment to rebuild manufacturing plants and to revitalize its domestic manufacturing production. Right now, Pennsylvania manufacturers can't even bid on these projects. So in conclusion, you can now see that it's important for Pennsylvania and the federal government to change its failed policies toward Cuba. There are tremendous opportunities for Pennsylvania's agriculture and manufacturing sectors if we just simply lift the travel and trade restrictions that we have on Cuba. Again, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak here today, and I want to applaud everybody for all the hard work they're doing for this effort. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're really honored um, to have uh, Representative Greg Rothman, who has been to Cuba more times than probably most people in this room, um, but for uh, a unique uh, reason that brings us together, and that's baseball. Um, in addition to being representative um, here in Pennsylvania, he's also a small business owner and a former Marine. We're really delighted to have uh, Representative Roth. Thank you. I, um, I first um, started researching Cuba when I was writing a book about um, a small biography of Milton Hershey. And uh, as, as you heard earlier, uh, Milton Hershey owned 60,000 acres in Cuba. And uh, I was fascinated by uh, his, uh, the, 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 the article I was writing was for cigar aficionados, so he smoked Cuban cigars, and I wanted to go visit uh, Hershey, Cuba, as part of my, the, the biography I was writing, and uh, was told I couldn't. And uh, so I started researching uh, travel to Cuba back in uh, the mid-1990s. Uh, I had an opportunity, though, in 2001 to go to Cuba to play baseball. Uh, a, a group of older uh, baseball players from the United States going to Cuba to play against uh, retired Cuban baseball players and have been there uh, in the last nearly 20 years 12 times uh, and have played baseball in almost every uh, Cuban major league stadium uh, have traveled the entire uh, country of Cuba from uh, Guantanamo Bay all the way to uh, through Havana and Sinfuegos uh, in my in those trips have made um, many great friends and uh, Miguel's one of them I'm, I'm so honored that he's here uh, there, um, the Cuban people are the most gracious, hospitable, loving, kind, giving people I've ever met, in, and I've traveled all over the world. Uh, and they love the principles of America. They love baseball. They love the hosp hospitality. I believe that uh, the relations between the United States and, and Cuba 
Uh, it's time for the embargo to end. It's time for the isolationist uh, policies to end. Uh, the United States of America is very unique in uh, the way we uh, make amends and forgive uh, our, uh, those who, who, who we may have uh, been opposed to in wars, in g dating back to our Revolutionary War, when only um, you know, decades later we're uh, fighting alongside the British against the French. Uh, we, we helped re rebuild Japan. Uh, we trade with Vietnam. Our relationship with the historic um, summit that the President's taking place in right now with North Korea. Uh, there is no reason why we should not diplomatically and economically uh, reach back out to Cuba and uh, begin a friendship between governments which already exists between the people. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud to lend my support to engage Cuba. Uh, I, I've been to Cuba enough that I know that they, they import 80 percent of their goods. Uh, we even see Coca-Cola cans every once in a while. Uh, it's no match for the Cristal and the Bucanero. Uh, I, I believe that we should be sending uh, Pennsylvania dairy products to Cuba in exchange for cigars, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Uh, but I, I just urge all my colleagues and uh, uh, the, our delegation in the United States Congress to keep an open mind about Cuba. And uh, we're, we're, America is founded upon this, the freedom, which includes the freedom to travel and to do commerce. And American citizens ought to be able to go to Cuba if they want, and American businesses ought to be able to do trade with Cuba if they want. So uh, I thank you for letting me be part of today, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has about uh, Cuba, it's, it's uh, the most wonderful place in the world outside of the United States. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. And lastly, we've heard a lot um, about the importance of agriculture, both the crisis we're facing uh, in this country and the opportunity that exists in Cuba. And to further uh, cement that point with some, you know, someone who's uniquely qualified to talk about this is Dr. Jim Diamond, the former dean of the College of Ag Sciences at Delaware Valley University. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here today. And I want to start out by saying peace and trade are achievable. Let it begin now and not tomorrow. In President John F. Kennedy's inaugural speech on the 20th of January of 1961, he declared, my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. In gleanings from the writings of His Holiness, of the, of the uh, Baha'i faith, he stated, Earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. Peace Corps has successfully answered President Kennedy's call to Ameri for Americans to make life easier for humanity around the earth that is but one country and humankind its citizens. But there is yet much to, do, to accomplish. We now live on a planet where its inhabitants have expanded their very existence into a global economy, global medicine, global education, global arts, global agriculture, global travel, and global trade. Citizens need to travel to gain knowledge of other societies and understand their traits. St. Augustine once stated, the world is like a book, and those who do not travel read only one page. It's important that people get to know their neighbors as a way to understand, appreciate, and respect their traditional customs beliefs, lifestyles, and to love them. The 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet once said, no matter what part of the world we come from, we are all basically the same human beings. I interpret this to mean it makes no difference the color of your skin, the shape of your steeple, the language spoken, whether you're rich or poor, well-dressed or poorly dressed, educated or uneducated. The fact remains we are all humans with many common traits. Usually a smile reflects happiness and appearance of being cheerful. And in her way of making friends, St. Teresa once says, peace begins with a smile. 
A Swazi farmer once told me, if you make your enemy your friend, you no longer have an enemy. Martin Luther King said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Making friends is a terrific feeling no other quest can fulfill. Now is the time for humankind to live in harmony. Achieving harmony amongst humankind is a complex process. Blueprints without borders need to be recognized by our global neighbors and to address issues without passports or visas. To heal Earth's wounds and ending bitter strife, humankind over the entire world must possess three virtues, patience, persistence, and perseverance. Patience is the ability to tolerate conflicts and promote trade without provocation and resist disagreement without expressing emotion. Persistence is steady abiding of efforts to enable tourists to travel and to export commodities despite obstructions that interfere with des desired actions. And perseverance will ultimately resolve and eliminate stumbling blocks, complexities, and strife. The price of success is hard work, dedication to the job at hand, and determination that whether we win or lose, we have applied the best of ourselves to the task at hand. So many benevolent and humble people from Pennsylvania have dedicated a portion of their lives to apply the best of themselves to peacefully help people improve their quality of life in nations around the world. Pennsylvania agriculture stands ready to express and export a variety of quality commodities to our dear friends in Cuba. Let peace and peace and trade is achievable. Let it begin now. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, especially appreciate any remarks that associates us with the Dalai Lama and St. Augustine. Um, but I hopefully we're better dressed. Um, with that, I just want to make one announcement that tomorrow um, we will be doing our launch of the council in uh, the western parts of Pennsylvania. We will be in Pittsburgh, um, showing really the breadth of both the diversity up here as well as the diversity and interest across the state. Um, with that, we'll pause here and open ourselves up for any questions from the press. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate your time and interest. Uh, our, the, I want to thank one more time our panelists and council members who are up here with us today. They'll be available for media if you want to grab any of them as well as myself. Thank you again. It's exciting to be here.